Um, so basically, that's how we, that's how the audition um, was. Okay. It's like the voice. It's like the same as the English voice, where you you sing for like some random person that you either get through that round, and then it's like the executive producers, and they basically tell you, "Hey, we like you. We'll, we'll let you know uh -huh. in a few months if we're gonna select you." And I guess from that from that batch, they like select. Okay. Oh, cool. What song did you sing? For the audition, oh. Oh, I sang a song called Dancing on My Own. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Okay. Is that by Robin? Yes. But I, I sung the Kalen Scott version, which is a, a bit slower. It's like okay. A okay. It's sad. See, guys, I'm hip. I'm <laughs> 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 so cool. hey, hey, Todd, how are you? You're good, I hope. Yep, I'm doing fine. Good, 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 good. One more semester after uh, two more weeks. Uh, all I need is the fall semester, and that's it. All right. Well, that's awesome, guys. That's great. Wow. Jeez, Louise. So, have have you won this thing yet, Kason? No, no, yeah. Oh, you can't tell. Well, um, we only recorded the battles, the 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 blind auditions and the battles. So now what's next is just the live shows. Oh, when's that? No idea. They, so basically right now the show is completely paused um, because of the COVID-19. So we just got to wait. I mean, they, they do have us working still. They have us um, practicing our songs okay. and doing stuff. Like we Zoomed the other day, we Zoomed our coach with our coach, which was cool. And the rule was don't talk about anything about the competition. So we got to talk about like, random stuff <laughs> it's cool how many how many people are in the like the finalists so right now there are seven people in each team okay how many teams are there four four okay all right wow yeah okay well they they'll fly you then down to miami once all this gets going correct nice nice I are, know. You, working, are you working on some special songs or um, I've been practicing my Spanish. I'm really good at Spanish. I've been practicing singing. It's like a whole other world. Um, connecting to a song in Spanish is a little bit different. Uh -huh. I don't know how to speak it. I don't know how to express myself like professionally the way I do in English. So it's a little bit like more uh -huh. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Do they put you up in fancy hotels or is it like the Econo Lodge? Are you not allowed to talk about it? That's okay. You don't have to. I'm just curious. It's a hotel. We had our own room. <laughs> All right with a view and we get put together so we can be like, if you want to be loud in the morning, you can. Wow. Who are the, or did they have like celebrity coaches? Like, you know, on American Idol, they had like, you know, Dolly Parton or, you know, uh, you know, some celebrity coach. Do they have any celebrity coaches? Yeah. So in, on The Voice, it's called The Mentor. Like they, they pop in on, on your battle um, band rehearsal and they just like critique you and um it's very hard because you're just given the song you're just given told who you're going to sing with and you're like rehearsing one day and then the next day you just have to sing it like you've oh, been wow. singing for like a week or something so it was scary <laughs> wow wow like, well, the way they tape everything for tv is insane like make it look like it's on like two days it's how uh, how big is the crowd to be honest, the set, like if you guys watch the, the show, it looks like a huge set, but it's not. Uh -huh. Really tiny. Uh -huh. Okay. Like from, from the stage to the coaches' um, chairs, it was like a few steps. I could, I could jump there if I wanted to. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. The perception is totally different. Yeah. It's insane. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Huh. What about like working the camera? So do you have to consider making that connection on camera and i mean obviously remembering the words and singing and doing all that stuff but how has been being like an on-air personality type your job like if you're not fun i don't want to see you sing no matter how good you like if you're weird i don't want to see you so you have to own that sexiness in front of the camera in some way shape or form like do they coach you on being in front of the camera, are they telling you where to look? Or are you just doing your thing and they're just figuring it out? 
what? That's a good question. Um, to be honest, no, that nobody tells you what to do. However, like if they see you struggling, if they see you're being too shy, someone in production will say like, Hey, like we're, we're losing your energy or you need to speak up or whatever. But I feel like the most important thing that I learned at came was that like, if you work as a reporter, as an anchor, as somebody really cool on E entertainment or E news, no matter what you have going on in your personal life, you have to come every day like it's your best day and you're really happy and whatever there were days when i was so stressed from things that were going on home like i lost i had lost my job so i was over there like trying to like whenever the camera was around i had to and i was the guy of the i was the 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 energetic kid from jersey there so <laughs> i'm like i would go on set they were expect the, I, I had already set the bar up so high so it was like challenging, you know, like you had to take a few minutes to yourself just to get back out there and just like, hey, everybody, because it's hard. But it was a lot of fun. And the cool thing is when I didn't know that when you record reality TV, you're recording someone talk about themselves or a story or whatever, they keep the camera rolling and he'll like take notes. So every I noticed that every producer did their own thing. There were some people who would... Um, um, write down the time and then like w whatever it was that I said that they liked it was insane there were other people who had like a whole board there were people recording the recording of the recording it was insane I was like what that way when they go to edit they already know what they want where's most of the competition from sorry Gilly oh that's okay I can go all day <laughs> everywhere there's people from Miami Florida um houston um california there was a young lady from canada um who was insane like she was so good um where else bolivia wow costa rica okay like everywhere it, and i think that's what was really cool there was even there was even a, a caucasian woman from um iowa idaho who sang flamenco and she was incredible incredible all her life she's she she has um some flamenco and that's how she learned um oh wow flamenco. very so, interesting okay uh, did you ever know. did you take any uh, tv classes at kane uh i think I, or, uh, i'm wondering I, if any of those uh, helped you at all sorry i'm wondering i'm just wondering if any of those helped you if you had taken them yeah definitely definitely um being aware of everything there I was like, oh my God, like, I know what they're doing. Like, I know what they're doing. I had a whole issue with my mic. And I was like, I could have fixed this myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. I was like, why am I, why? They had me running from like one side of the, um, of the, the stage to the other side of, of this place just to change the wire. It was insane. So in the realm of reality TV, have you, again, I understand if you can't answer these questions, but have you, I mean, a lot of things you'll see, for instance, like The Bachelor, and a lot of people will record things out on the street where they make them do things over and over again, like something live to tape. Have you had to redo something live to tape? Um, like as far as like B-roll? Uh, maybe not or, necessarily B-roll. Or, or like they that was supposed something. to be. No, yeah. no, we don't get to re-record anything. So there's like, I think four major rehearsals for, for the blind audition. When you walk on the stage, they teach you how to walk on the stage, what you're supposed to do, where the X is supposed to be. And one of the biggest things I've learned about um, a show like this that is like on its feet is that decisions are constantly being changed. Like on the spot, like they'll have a meeting the morning before we get there to the studio. And they're like, you know, we're gonna decide to, to have one steal instead of two for each coach, which happened this season. What they did was they they brought somebody back to the, um, what is that called? So basically whoever didn't get a chair turn got an opportunity to come back. So they picked, I think six people, but because they did that um, last season, each coach picked two people to um, save. So that's um, when, when you battle head to head, only one can win, one can go home. So with that, you can pick two people, but this season, they just change it. I don't know where like decisions were being quickly changed. And it's just like in the news world, like things change. There might be a story that might be 
super amazing and you might have practice doing it this way but if they tell you to do it another way you just have to adapt to that environment like literally the day of the blind audition they changed they changed the um the spot where we were supposed to stand after we sing there 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 was supposed to be another tape but what they had us do was sing sing where we are in this area and then take a step up to the to the first corner of the stage and we were like what like who's gonna remember that but the coaches were there to help you too so if you were looking crazy they'll be like hey like move up so it was like everyone was working together. Everyone knew what the new rule was. Do they bring choreographers in there too with you? No, unfortunately not. That would be cool. That would be really cool for like the live shows. Yeah. For the live shows, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot, a lot um, more stuff. Sometimes they give you like props. Like, uh, like every person will have like their own different thing. It, it's not just the stage. Well, exciting. It's interesting. What about interviews? What about talking to people? Do you find yourself getting nervous? Um, does your public speaking, your practice in public speaking, have a like play in how you're answering questions, talking to people? Are you nervous? Oh, I'm always nervous. I I feel like now it's the excitement and and a mix of nervousness because again, I do speak English and Spanish very well. But it's that it's those interviews where where they don't tell you what they're gonna ask you. Most of the times they do for news outlets and stuff like that. They'll they'll tell you, hey, I'm, I just want to ask you about this and let's play a game. And this is the game. And it's like, oh, uh, okay. And other times it's just it's very rapid. Like we filmed an interview with um, a host, our coach, and the whole team that's on onto the live shows. And they asked us, what was it? Like, why do we like our coach? But it was so like, go. And it was like one by one. And it was like, well, what am I gonna say? Like everyone took all the good answers. And I was the last one. So I'm like, oh my God, you're great. You're very great. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. So it's like those moments where you really have to be prepared, but also keep it professional, but also be yourself. Be that person that everyone fell in love with. Be that person that when you walked in the room, they were like, we like him. Huh. Have you screwed up at all? Like, have you made a mistake? Have they had to correct you? Oh yeah, I cursed. <laughs> Not on the show, but like- Look at, look at Chris Bella. Interviews, <laughs> interviews. Like Chris Bella. Yeah, their goal is like, be yourself, say whatever you want. Obviously we don't want cursing. We don't have, want to have to keep bleeping you out, but they want it to be as authentic as possible. Because I feel like that's one, that's one of the things I talk to my friends about, like when on the camera, like, there's certain things that you can fake, but it'll catch up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been doing, I, I did a short film like a few years ago and the character who was playing my girlfriend, she was really, really like shy. But when it was time to, to shoot, it was like a whole other person. And it's important to, to bring that, especially for students who are, are looking forward to, to getting in the media world and having the openness and willingness to, to continue to learn because even in this, um, like it, it wasn't a job, but it was kind of like a job, you know? And I learned so much. Even though I was in front of the camera, I was watching everything just happen and unfold. Like, how are we, how are we gonna do that? Like between us, like we knew who we were gonna go against, but we had to record it after. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they were like, this is, this is a really professional show. This is who your partner is. We have vocal rehearsal today because tomorrow you have to sing for your coach and your mentor. And also today we're gonna to record you finding out that this is your partner, so work, work with us. And it was just like, uh, but, and there were some people who did amazing. And there were some people who were just like, Ugh. like it was just awful, like they were so awkward, but they owned it. And I guess that's what, that's like the beauty of television. Like you fall in love with who a person is no matter how quirky they are, no matter how clumsy they are. It's like your favorite comedian. We like them. They might not be the best looking. We just like who they are, their, their way of being. And I feel like in any channel of um, entertainment, again, like TV hosts, like anybody, people like you for you. 
Like it has nothing to do with talent because that's something that we can practice. Somebody can sit with you on the desk and teach you all their all the things that they learn. But one thing you can't learn is individuality, who you're yourself. Like right. you know, I right. sound like a hippie right now. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Simon Cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was classic. That was classic. You sound like. <laughs> have they done any background pieces on you yet? Like travel to New Jersey and talk to your mom, and you know, and like, oh, this is where Kason grew up. When you go to university, <laughs> uh, that would be cool. Unfortunately, no. They do all their B-roll in Miami, but um, for your blind audition, they fly two people out from your family, and okay. they be part of your um story. So they interview, they interview my mom and my grandma, who were my guests, um, that that day in the morning. So it was a a long ass yes day. <laughs> it was tremendously long. And they basically, it was four days of blind auditions, two groups in one day. The way they, I peeped at like somebody's schedule and the way it was, again, it changes. Like it said that my audition was like at one, like it, that I was supposed to go up on the stage and sing at one. I ended up singing at 1030. Wow. It was like 1030, 11. So everything changes. So it's like, I used to see like the, the girls in the wardrobe section, like it was like eight of them and they would go crazy because they would follow this like, Thing, and then like two minutes later they have a whole new thing to follow and it's like whoa. and it's like you just have to adapt and it's not just them it's like the whole the whole thing when one decision is made like it affects every department it's insane like who are the, who who are the judges who are the, who are the judges the judges you may know luis fonsi he sings that song um despacito <laughs> what's yeah, he saying despacito despacito oh. all right i'm gonna look it up <laughs> despacito yeah, it's very popular. You should after after we hang up with this, like look it up. It's so good. What's his name? Luis Luis Fonsi. Got it. Okay. It's like music that make you make you want to dance. Okay, you know? I'll take that. Okay. So yeah. then, who makes okay, like the, She's going for it. The, <laughs> the final decision on the winners is it at? It's not the judges, correct? No. The so um so it's um blind blind auditions and the battles. The blind auditions, you pick your coach if somebody turns around. The battles, the coach picks a winner, and you either get saved or you get sent home. And then for the live shows, that's when the um, people at home start to vote. So from there on, it's the people. Hmm. No. Cool. And, and the whole, the people vote, like, do we know for a fact that it's accurate? Yeah, you know, no, that's so a good, that's my, I have a theory, I have a, I have a theory, like in, in communication and in, in media TV, we learned that a reality show is fixed. Like I had to watch The Circle twice. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show, The Circle, US. It's basically this competition um, where they put a bunch of people in these like different apartments and you have to like, it's basically a, pep a popularity contest and you have to like be like, what picture am I gonna choose for my profile? How am I gonna talk to these people? What are my strategies? And some people are catfishes, like some people are not who they say they are, some people are, some people are themselves, like they're using their pictures, but they're using this different persona that's not really the more raunchy or maybe I'm more reserved. And I had to watch it twice because I'm like, okay, like, how do they pick the winner? You know, like, somebody who put these people together knew what they were doing. So it's like, even on La Voz and The Voice, like, there's, there's the R&B guy, there's the Spanish girl or the Spanish guy, there's the country guy, there's the, gu the girl and the guy who can sing anything and everything. So it's like, I started to think about that too. I'm like, hey, maybe, maybe this is like staged, maybe this is not, maybe it's staged to a certain point, maybe, like for American Idol, that shit was staged. Sorry, I just cursed. It was staged. It was staged. And I saw that and it, and it kind of like, I was like, oh, like, so you're telling me 90 Day Fiance is not real? Oh, honey, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 90 Day Fiance is not real? Come on. You're I just tell you, that show is super baby. good. Oh, man. <sighs> What's the one I want to get married and have a baby in a year with you or something? Yeah. Uh, that, that's that's true. True. Add another child to the world. Fantastic. Don't you ever watch TLC? I love TLC. I used to watch Breaking Amish. Remember that? 
Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. That was my show. I would, I would sit there and like, oh, no, go yeah. home. It's, there's nothing. Oh, what about, I love it, Dr. Pipple Popper. Yes, I oh, love well, it. I watched that. Just <laughs> hey, he came back. He was like, hey, I'm here for this conversation. You know, so, uh, yeah, gosh. He's on all week, by the way, so he must oh. adore you. <laughs> oh, and the texts are coming in. Maria Heredia said she can't make it, but to tell you hello. Oh, tell her I said hi. Will do. Listen, <laughs> Kason, I wanted to stop in and say hi. Congratulations. I got to get so going much. from work and writing some tests here. So, but congratulations. Stay in touch with us, okay? Of course. Of course. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Absolutely. Take good care. Be safe. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Good. Now that he's gone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now we can talk about the real thing. Um, so basically, I need your help to win this show. I'm asking. <laughs> it's the whole I can't believe they don't give you a whole lot of direction on where to do what you're doing unless as of right now they re there's a, too many people that they don't need to care as much um as far as what like when like when you make like do this do that yeah I mean even to make sure that they do they have marks for you I want you to be able to be here and here and there yeah, um, like like recording b-roll like yeah they would tell us like hey during your performance i mean not even oh, like our performance yeah so there were the, those four um rehearsals where we sang the same song with the with the clothes on like a dress rehearsal with yeah. the lights and everything i think four times we did a re we did one rehearsal where we sung it three times and then the next one four times they were dressed the the I'm lying. The one where three times it was just regular clothes, but it was a stage mic. It was more for like sound. And the other one was like the whole thing. So there were girls who were would go on stage and they would stop the whole thing and be like, we need to change her shoes. Or can you can you move more? Or yeah, I remember one of my notes was to move more. And I, I was running out of breath. So I'm like, what do you want me to do? It was crazy. And it's like it's again like what we um what we think we're doing sometimes we're not doing like the yes. set it looks small so you think you have to be small but no it looks humongous on the tv and like for the battles for every dress rehearsal we had um somebody from contestant management would record it on the tvs in the back so in reality for the um battles we got to see like the three people before us me and my partner were the last two people to go on the first oh, night so we were Sorry? Talk about stressful. It's yeah, like, it's stressful. You can make you watch everyone. And there's like audience members there. And sometimes like between a contestant, like the coaches will like joke around with the audience or, you know, and it's like, what? Like you have to focus through all that and kind of like remember your what's what, what you're doing there. Sometimes I have to be like, what, what am I doing here? Am I working here or am I singing here? Like it was insane. But, but it was overall, it was such a great experience. But definitely, um, a huge learning experience like so have you noticed anyone like screwing stuff up and you don't say anything it's like at the we want to be friendly with these people but at the end of the day you you know like the movie showgirls you hope you throw some beads and they fall and hurt themselves so i know it's like a double-edged sword but have you noticed people that like you could point things out possibly they're doing wrong and don't tell them um the really cool thing and i'm being super That's honest, loaded question. I'm being very super honest everyone is really nice and supportive like i remember that people would go to, people people would go to each other's rooms and like practice or they'll ask each other for advice say hey i need help with the bridge of the song like vocal coach told me to do this but it's just not it's not working for me can you help me or can you play the guitar for me while i sing this like everyone was really supportive really very professional People were like 18, 19, and I'm like, why are you acting like you're 40? Like super professional, like people who who breathe music. Like, I'm sure like you guys have your own passion. So imagine meeting someone who just exudes that, like, this is what this is what I do naturally. Like if you sit down and, and try to create a side hustle for yourself, that's when you're gonna kind of like figure out what you're really good at. And, it, and, and that it comes naturally, like. It's, it's weird. 
how did you find out about this opportunity and like how did it come like did you wake up one morning you're like i'm gonna submit a tape right. to this show hey. sorry um i think it was uh what was it i think i think so the audition was like i i seen the first season which was really cool but then the i think the cattle call the audition where it's like you just sing and whatever that was like in july i went with my mom it was by world trade in some hotel um little cubicles and you sing and then you, they either pass you to the next one or not and again it's it's very very like organized like every person has like an envelope they write in like code so people know like so i'm pretty sure like off off that day they like pick people for the show but basically you get chosen and they tell you like hey um you have to wait like a few months and from everyone who we've seen, we're just gonna condense it. And they record the audition too, so they get to see it. And one of the people that I didn't know I auditioned for was the executive producer of the show. And luckily I was myself. And I think that's what got me onto the show. The fact that I'm, a, I'm crazy, like I had them laughing. Like it's important no matter what you do in life to always be yourself. Yeah, like, memorable. People, yeah, don't listen to people say, oh, you have to be like, like this to be, to work for, for Google or, or have like this, um, this crazy resume. No, it's about you. It's about you. And we're always constantly selling ourselves, especially in this industry. Yeah. Um, we, every, in any industry, I feel like every day we're selling ourselves. We want people to follow us on Instagram. We want people to listen to our stuff. We want people to, to give us a chance. So we're constantly like, you know? So, social media, how has that um, played a role in your life, even since the show, per se? Um, social media does get insane. Like, I was overwhelmed like, after the show aired, because I kept it a secret. Like, obviously, you have to, you can't post anything. The only people who knew about it was, like, my close friends and my, my close family. Some people knew that I was doing something, but people didn't know what. So, from, I found out September, September 11th at 4 p.m. that I got on the show. But the way they said it, it was like, am I on the show or am I not? You have me signing all these contracts, but like, what's up? Am I on the show? Like, they, they say it in a way like, please sign these documents <laughs> if you want to be on the show, but you're on the show, like they picked you. Um, then, I had, then the blinds were in November and the battles were in January. So all that time since September to November, it's having to like, that's hard. That's yeah. Weird. Do you guys have any questions? I know I'm monopolizing and I can continue to monopolize. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want to not include you. No? It's not really a question. It's just a comment. <laughs> <laughs> I admire the fact that you are doing something that you love, especially on La Voz, because I remember as a child, I was I was in choir for a, like a very long time, a very good portion of my life. Yeah. And I always wanted to be in like either American Idol or La Voz or just somewhere where I could sing. But at that time I was very shy about doing it, but it was like once I was on stage, I was okay. But like now as I got older, I'm like, I want to do it, but I don't know if I want to do it. No. Uh -huh. So I just admire the fact that you're doing it. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I feel like everyone, like everyone here, I know there's only like four of you guys. Um, no matter what you do, like do it. Like sometimes I, like you don't have a plan. Like I didn't have, a, I lost my job in May, like right before graduating. Then I got this opportunity. Then it just happened. I still couldn't find a job. Like some, sometimes things happen on purpose and you kind of just gotta like like let it go, just go with it, because once you start to do the most, the things that are supposed to be for you don't turn out to be for you because you aren't ready. So like my biggest advice is no matter what you want to do, do it. Like right now I'm writing scripts. I, I'm always like with my friends and I'm like, oh, like this should be on a show, like guys, this should be like we're in a show, guys, we should be on a show. And I'm like constantly going back home. Like I'm like that weird friend who's like. Okay, like I'll say a joke on my phone and then the next day I'm like, that was not funny. But I'll still use it for like my script because I was like, I, I was going to use it. You know, I'm going to use it. Um, yeah, like follow your dreams, whatever they are. If they change tomorrow or next week, like always take a risk because you don't want to be that person who doesn't take that risk. Not taking that risk is giving somebody else 
the opportunity. And that's one of the things I used to do musical theater back in the day. And sometimes I wouldn't go to the the auditions because I, I didn't feel like I was good enough or it was too far. Like all these excuses. Like it's like the gym. Like find the motivation. Like I have a cork board. I write quotes sometimes. Like I'm so cheesy. My friends come here and they're like, really, K song. Like right now it says, there will always be someone who can't see your worth. Don't let it be you. And that shit is real. Like, you know, like no matter what, no matter what career path you take do what you want and in that process when you do things from from here from within because you want to things just naturally work out it's just like the universe it's god it's it's the way it's supposed to be because when you look to to be good at something to when you practice something you flourish you get good at it that's my advice like always do what you want and when you become rich and famous like give me a shout out (laughs) so where do you want to go from here like what do you think after this is all over where do you, I mean, say, you know, when you win, but after that, like, where do you, like, what's next? What do you think? I definitely want to continue to do my own music. Like, whether I win or, or not, I hope that it, this opportunity opens doors for me that can get me to a different stage in my life where I can wake up and say, hey, I, I have to write this song for this artist, or I have 10 songs I have to submit by, like, 20. And these are the lives of, like, songwriters and artists like it's a different life but imagine waking up doing what you really like are good at like the only damn thing you're good at it, it's not gonna feel like a job you're gonna probably tap into psychology like i'm i don't know if i'm like sourcing this right i don't know but i some girl did a, a, a her thesis um last year on on like the psychological thing of the way that that we think sometimes it's not the way we think it's the environment we're in and sometimes we just need to like like to remove ourselves from a certain vi- environment, whether it be a toxic ex, whether it be that job that, that you hate or that class that you're like really too good to be in. Like, like and we all know that one Spanish girl or Spanish boy who takes Spanish class to get an easy A. You're not learning anything. <clears throat> Chris. <laughs> I did not. I took French. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Correct yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's so weird, y'all. Like it's crazy how like, like I'm, I'm 27 now. I'll be 28 in September, and I'm, I'm still learning. Like that, we have all the resources, and it's just about. Well, I guess the biggest problem with us being young is the financial aspect of it. But those things can be figured out. There's like a way around. Well, I don't know if there's a way around. Just, <laughs> figure it out, y'all. Figure it out. I figure it out. Figure it out. out. No figure it out. Yeah, just figure it out. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess one of the biggest things this year that I'm learning is um, to say yes to yourself more. You know, to, to do, I know it sounds weird, to do the things that you like, it's so easy. Like, sometimes I, I, I go to eat by myself sometimes because I really want to go there. My friends are like, oh, I'm only free at this time. Like, no, go. Right. If you've got concert tickets and your friends are not, not going, go. Like, just go. Just do it. Just do it. Because tomorrow you're going to wake up and say, damn, I wish I should have. Oh, I could have. Well, I want to wish you the best of luck. I love oh. your um, energy. Thank you. Uh, your charisma. You yeah. <laughs> your charisma and your energy. And um, I, I hope you uh, succeed in everything else that you do. Oh, thank you. She's going to work for me. She's probably going to do marketing. <laughs> Over my social media. Have you um, made any, have you networked with like the production people on the show? Yes. Like- I don't think I'm supposed to though, but I have some of them on Instagram, Facebook. Only you the, you do. I guess only the people who added me were the people who are not working on the show anymore. So that's another thing. Like a lot of these shows are like by contract. So some of the people they use for the blinds, they didn't use for the battles. And some people they did. And then there were some new people. So these, some of these people were just jumping from job to job but it was within their chain like their network so it was like they were never without a job like one of the girls who i'm really cool with she she worked she was like wardrobe management her only job was to take a picture of all the contestants next to each other see how they look sometimes they would tell us like that that's not gonna work like you need to change like whatever or she was really cool but um she i got her information i was like hey how'd you get a job here everyone would say the same answer. Or oh, I got a job from so-and-so. I got a job from so-and-so. So it really is who you know. 
because yeah. these people started literally the next day and it's like just come we'll figure out what they're going to give you to do right because there's always something to do and like i can say that the environment looks stressful we would sometimes leave the studio at 10 they would stay until 12 or one to be back there at six to do whatever god knows what but it was super, super organized. Like super, super. Like they all had like these pamphlets of our, our picture, our name, and who we were going up against and what mic were we using, if we were using in ears or not, like everything. Social security, how much money is, is in your bank, like everything. What about wardrobe? Have they put you in anything and you're like, oh God, no. Oh yeah. So really? for, the blinds, for the blinds, we had to bring our own clothes and the stylist would um like help us and the the first stylist for the blinds and for the battles were two different women the ones for the blinds she was more like really hip and cool and like i think you should do those like um camouflage pants with that graphic tee and that vest and that hat and those sneakers and maybe we can give you a chain like she was really cool like for for our um our b-roll we had to be like super casual sim like they wanted you in jeans and like a t-shirt like super so that when they see you on stage it's like wow like a star or whatever <laughs> but um i i although the clothes i had on for the blinds were mine except the button down that wasn't mine that was theirs and i hated it but then i kind of liked it at first i was like what is this like the flintstones like it looked like little like stone i was like what is this but i was like okay i like it but then for the battles they dress you completely and you kind of have to match not match but kind of like um coordinate with your partner because you're going to be singing with them so you kind of have to so my partner hated her dress because it had like these big shoulder looking things and i hated my jacket because it was just heavy and they didn't get that like we ha i mean i wasn't singing a song we were singing someone you love it wasn't like i was dancing anywhere but it was so uncomfortable like that when like i was singing like i would just be like it was a weird material and it would scratch my neck. So I was like, I'm not trying to be like a diva or anything, but like, look at my neck. She was like, Oh, like, this is what it's like to be like in this world. Like sometimes you're going to be uncomfortable. I was like, okay, but I don't want to be uncomfortable. Can you do something about my jacket? And basically what they did, they, she just sewed like, so like pretend this is like the part that's itching. She just sewed like this part so that it didn't like touch me instead of like cutting it or adding like a cloth in there like i'm like what like it's insane how like i i didn't even have pants until the day of the battles because they were like um taking in my pants like the day of like my thing was done like i'm like oh like they work super quick like if you mess up like some communication like you'll be like you'll probably get fired that's how bad it is because there's like no way for errors you know what i'm saying like Someone said, do this. Everyone else heard you. Everyone else, everyone now is on the same page. Are you on the same page? Is your team on the same page? Is the, the other team on the same page? If not, tell them. It's like, what? Crazy. Wow. Yeah. But back to wardrobe. Sometimes, like, oh, they yes. tell us what... They, like they know, they like these people know how to dress for TV. It's like, it's different than, than what we think it is. Like things are, are on purpose. Like I had everything plain because my jacket was too much. Like it, it looked shiny on, on the camera. Like it looked like, it, like it cost like a million bucks. Like, and it's like, like these people know, like sometimes it's good to just trust people because they know what they're doing. Yeah, I ended up liking the jacket. I almost kept it. <laughs> what about um the lights? Were the lights like hot and like pouncing on you? Yeah, it's the studio is very cold because of all the lights. But when you're up there, when you're up on the um stage, like you kind of don't feel anything. It does get hot though. Like for the blinds, I was hot. Maybe because I was moving around. For the battles, I was sweating. Like my hands were sweaty because on TV you don't see it, but they record right right when you're done singing. They the coaches talk, they fool around, whatever. Obviously, they can't put everything on TV. But right after that, and your coach has to pick. Um, again, like, it's not live, but there's no, there's no like, redo. Like, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, 
Like, it one thing, once you're on that tape, it's like, we rehearse it, it is what it is. If you come in on the song late, it just, it, like, there's no redo. Like, if, if there was, uh, the people who went before us, the guy dropped his, um, his, like, mic pack, and his um, earpiece went flying, and they were singing a very, like, ur um, tropical urban song, and it was very moving, and I guess he, he did, like, a wrong turn, and the thing fell, and when it fell, he was, like, off the rest of the song, both of them. Aww. Yeah, luckily it worked out in his favor and he got through, but it's like little things that, and you just keep going. They'll acknowledge it. Oh my. Yeah, it's insane. It's scary. <sighs> Very scary. Um, so, did you know who all the coaches were? Like, did you do research before the show or did you know who they were? Um, I know who they were. I, I kind of listened to to most of them, like not religiously, but like I heard of them. Like you know, I obviously, I'm a huge fan of Luis Fonsi, and I would have loved to have been on his team. But just like it is a strategy for them to have certain voices on their team, it's a strategy uh, a strategy for us to pick the right coach. And for me, it was that of um. This was your choice. You chose yeah, your. Yeah, you. I got to choose my my coach. I chose Carlos Vives because he's like the Blake Shelton. He's like the, he's very humble, like super humble. And there's no one like me. No one like me would go on his team because you think that you don't fit on his team because you sing R&B or you're not on that lane or, but I'm versatile. So it's going to work out. If I were to go with Luis Fonsi, I, I feel like I would be put in this box. You know, where, oh, he's just the R&B. Like there's people who are just singing like, reggaeton there's just people who are just singing ballads that want to sing like other things that want to have that um to sing something different we don't get to choose our songs unfortunately they choose our songs for us some people are given a song and other other people are given three options and they pick from them like for me i had to sing a reggaeton i had to sing a spanish ballad and two ballads and they ended up picking the reggaeton. Now, I don't know. I don't, they gave me the song, but they didn't give me the track. So I don't know if it's going to be like a ballad version or piano version. If it's going to start off like, like a ballad and then it's just going to get crazy. Like, so right now I've been practicing a song. I've been practicing the song and just trying to like move and run. And, and so that when I'm on that stage and I'm like, get into it. Cause I am so well, crazy. I mean, how much in advance is it? Like, what if you screw up the word? I screwed up, to be honest, I screwed up the, the lyrics for the battles for Someone You Love. I screwed it up. I, I'm sure you guys didn't know, though. Yeah, play it, off it, up second, it was the second, was it the second verse? I, I, I repeated that little spot in the first verse. I mean, I'm pretty sure nobody saw that, but, like, you just keep going. Like, there were people who, um, there were people who did, there was two girls who did, they, they didn't do the best. And it was, it was, I guess, the, the choice of song. Like, it was, like, a song that you can't really sing. It was just, like, too wordy. It was um, La Tusa. It's called La Tusa. It's a reggaeton oh, song. I know the, that song. They were struggling with it because it was, like, so many, so wordy. And it was, like, <laughs> but still having to sing that, like, it's, it's a lot. And then one of the girls was off, and then the other girl was, like, doing great. And it was just, like, it was crazy. So, yeah, you don't, you could be, like, super ready. And then in your blind audition, like, you might, it might go, whoo. So it makes you wonder if they give you songs that are too hard for you to sing because they don't want you to sing them after that week. Maybe. I don't I know. Don't, I, don't I think know. everything has a purpose. This is Everything. True. Like, I, like, going into it from a standpoint of, um, of somebody who studied media and, and production, like, you think about these things, like, yo, like, are they giving me the song like so that I can do good or so that I can be liked or this and that? And I've even spoke to the um, social media um, person and like it, they have a strategy for everything. Like she's like, don't worry about this post. Like we're going to post it, like do this, do that. And I'm like, but what is it? Like, because the English voice, like after they, after their thing airs, it's right on YouTube. You know, it's like they know what they're doing. Like sometimes they give us things and sometimes they don't. 
like right now they're uploading the the videos on youtube on different channels which again it's their strategy i don't know what what it is i want to know but it's like is it for the network is it for us is it for like right now they're doing things for us we did like i told you we did our zoom with with our coach and that was cool because we got to talk about like whatever my coach his, yeah my coach showed us his like short shorts he had these short shorts like you know um the guys like the athletic shorts that they're like really comfortable they look like boxers it was really weird we were like what's going on like what is he showing us but it was like these cool pants he's like i like i'm just like you guys like i'm just lounging in the house like i have pjs on so i just woke up i had coffee and i'm gonna sing for you guys and he just started singing we're like what the hell and it was this cool conversation but it does make you think like like what is stage and what is not you know because i know like you kind of know what they're doing with like the really good people who they let go they know that they're going to be fine like they know that they're going to grow their their following and they're, they're going to do great things like there's a, a kid who didn't get he didn't win his battle but he has like 100k and something followers and he has a million views already on youtube it's like yeah like they, it's like they knew he was going to be fine because he's that good so it's like why keep him on the show any hate mail um yeah like some of the comments on youtube or like on instagram like some people somebody was like um god they're awful like 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 i it doesn't it doesn't bother me it doesn't like maybe not yet maybe because i didn't like hit a core or hit a nerve or talk about my mom or something like that like i don't know but um no like i don't it doesn't do anything to me it's like these people yeah sometimes i go look and then i go on their page and it's like oh she's like old and are lonely like it's fine. Oh, yeah like you don't want to like ruin your character over somebody's like comment like these people don't know anything so it's like it doesn't bother me now my family like oh god like they'll see something they'll be like oh no we had to tell her off i'm like no don't do that because then like <laughs> they'll probably see that and they'll probably be like oh he's problematic like but no nothing nothing crazy thank god everything's been good awesome do you guys have any more questions like how happy is your mother and your grandmother when they found out you know yet you're moving on like what like what was their expression like i'm hispanic like they'll be happy if anything you graduate college you do anything ama- anything good it's like, an oh achievement yes yes and I, to me it was just very emotional to have my um grandma come with me because that with was you? part of my story like um so the story basically my story was about my grandma and my dad, my dad who passed away, who loved music. I definitely got that from him. But my grandma kind of gave me that okay. In our culture, it's very, like, frowned upon to to do anything out of the norm. Yeah. A singer. Mm-hmm. And I, like, oh, what? Like, girl, go into that room and do your homework. Boy, like, study. Like, it's frowned upon in our culture to, to do something out of the norm, you know? So to get that approval from her when I was younger, we were sitting. So I was young. Every summer... Um, going to Puerto Rico was like my camp. So I would go to my grandparents' house in Puerto Rico for like two months. Like my mom was like, that was like the best thing for my mom, I guess, because I wasn't around. That was a hot head when I was little. But um, we were in the porch and we were playing dominoes on the on the floor. Our porch was like huge in Puerto Rico. And we saw a shooting star. It was my first time seeing a shooting star. You know, in Puerto Rico, it's very dark. We, yeah. it and our house is like secluded. So it's very peaceful. It's very nice. So I saw a shooting star and my grandma was like, oh, make a wish. And I was like, I was young. So I was like, I want to be a singer. And I said it out loud. And she was like, listen, you know, it's okay. Like you go ahead, like do whatever you want. I, I'll support you. And that kind of gave me that, like it always stuck with me to, that it was okay. That you knew that she was going to be there for you no matter what you did. To support you, might, you. You, you might hear your parents say like, oh, maybe this, like, are you still doing this or whatever? Like they're just concerned. And mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes people do, do let go of their dream like i have a friend who's like trying to be a chef for a few years now and gets a good job and then gets let let go but it's like it's not working for him right now but it's like get, give it like continue don't stop because every every year like you get in somewhere you know C- certain things don't happen overnight you know don't talk anybody out of don't let nobody talk you out of your dreams so what's the best advice that you've gotten from like you know, your coach like about your singing that you know that you need that you needed to improve or that you have improved already 
um, one of the most important notes, uh, the connection, the connection with the song and how important it is. Like if you, if you don't find a connection with the song, how are they going to find a connection with the song? How, how are you going to connect? Like, what are you going to do? And it's, it's so much deeper than, than that. Like um, me and my partner, luckily we got along. Like there were some people who had a hard time because they kept changing their songs or their song wasn't like the best song. Luckily it worked for us. It was in our pocket. It was fine. It was something we were familiar with. And we actually took a day. I went over to her room. We ordered room service. We ordered drinks. And we were just like, let's get to know one another and let's figure out what this song means to us. And we both got our heart broken maybe within the last year or so. And it was, it became easier to like build that connection with the song and then with my partner. So a lot of the the when you watch the episode you see us holding like our coach is like you guys like don't stop um holding hands like are you guys dating like, like what's going on and it, story line. <laughs> yeah it was so embarrassing i was like oh my god and they put it on tv and everything my my face was red i'm like because <gasps> it's like here we are talking about music and then you just out of nowhere are you guys dating like it's like well you're my coach like well it's like oh we're talking about this now okay coach like you know like but um be the scandal it'll keep you there even longer yeah, that's what i was telling i was telling my partner i was like girl we're gonna ride this out hopefully we get to sing again we'll kiss we'll kiss i'll do it <laughs> come on it's a live show they're not gonna edit that out come on it's gonna be the first thing for the right? previews we're gonna go viral or not yeah but um that's what i like i realized that um it, teamwork is so important in this in this field because um take my example um, I was working with a girl who I was scared to go against. Like I looked up everyone on my team. I was like, I'm gonna probably battle against her. And then my the vocal coach calls me and he's like, and she's like, um, you're gonna sing with a girl. And I was like, I kind of figured I was gonna sing with a girl. Someone you love, like a guy and a girl, if they were to sing that, that would be fucking amazing. So I was like, I kinda but um we 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 had a bond and we looked at it as let, let's not look at it as a competition let's have fun let's take their notes and you'll see that we'll both get in and if we don't both get in then it's fine we did we did our best and it worked out it, it really worked out and it's important teamwork is important in any in any job but more so in in this in this field because it's i feel like it's non-existent like you know what i'm saying like some people fake it like i've been to shows before like or or have seen like of clips where people from the view would be all like on tv and once the cameras are, are off they're like a different person they don't talk to each other they don't it's like and i feel like certain things like that you can see on tv you can see when something is not authentic you can see when a person is not themselves and that's why you always have to be yourself when in, in real life so that when there's a camera in front of you or you're interviewing for that job, you don't look like you don't belong. Like this is who you are. You were born for this. Like right, to always have that energy, you know? So all of these like terrible group projects that you did in college and all growing up, you mean working in groups actually helps you in life? It does, it does, it does. Like I taught my, um, my partner uh, about community the message like how important the message is and the receiver and how it's sometimes not it, it's about the receiver and how they receive it sometimes like we because we're saying something we feel like we said it, it we we meant it this way and that's the way it was and it's not like that sometimes people may receive the the message i totally like what and they might behave a certain way toward you and you're like why are you treat she's a bitch blah 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 no she just doesn't understand you what you said last week in class like it threw her off, but she didn't say anything. Or she tried to. Cause there was a, I, I, I gave my partner a note that I, that I got from um, theater and she didn't understand it. Like she thought I was like telling her what to do. I was just like, no honey, I'm sharing what I learned because what I'm the one who's having this problem. And I don't want you to have that problem. And it was like, oh, she's like, oh, I get, I get you. And it was always so helpful. It wasn't ever a, uh, um, oh, why is he singing this part and I'm singing this part? Like, it just flowed. Like, we would clap for each other. It was just beautiful, you know? And you, what you saw on TV was, was our relationship. And not, not, I'm not trying to sound like super gay or anything like that, but that's what it was. It was just really authentic. And that showed me, like, you can't edit. You can't edit that stuff. 
You can't. Now learning that, it's how are you going to take that in the future? Yeah. Because if that got the results, how do you mimic that over and over again? Right. And I think it's just that, bringing that same energy that what, whatever, it's that thing that you possess. <laughs> it could be like that you're really smart. It could be, it could be that laugh. Like there's the, the host for the digital platform of Laos. She's like, she, we do like the fun games and stuff. That's for like online or the app. She has a snort when she's, when she laughs. She's like, <laughs> like, she, it's like really bad. And she interviewed Will Smith and um, Martin Lawrence for that um, Bad Boys 3. And it came out and, and, and they mentioned it to her like that it's, it's beautiful how it's you. It's a part of you and it makes you you. And people tune in now to watch her do interviews because of this, her way of being. It's just so, like, she's really quirky and really geeky and goofy. And then when you add this, like, it's like, oh, my gosh, she just snorted. And I kind of like it. And I like her. And I want to follow her on Instagram. And I want to see what's up with her. And it's just, and that's what it is. You know, no no matter what field you're in, it's just giving it your all and and sticking to it. Aww. Well, do you guys have any other questions? It's been an hour. I don't want to keep you all day. I mean, I could, but. 